Hi and welcome to SQL Server Performance Tuning Session. In today's session, we'll talk about how to detect worst performing SQL queries on any production servers. My name is Prakash Hira and I work as a Senior Infrastructure DB at Advanced Software in San Francisco. You can visit my blog at sqlfeatures.com to download the scripts today. You can get in touch with my Twitter or Facebook accounts. So in this session, what I'll do is I'll take you through all the top performing queries which are taxing your SQL servers. We'll look into how CPUs are used, which queries are taking more time on CPU, which are uh, using a lot of disk IOs, as well as the network. Which queries are using most CPU? What we'll do is we'll try to create some scenarios here where we will create, generate some of the queries which are taking a lot of CPU time and then we'll try to capture those queries by using the DMOs available in SQL Server. In the next aspect, we'll look into that which queries are using most CPU in last 30 minutes. Say you are running into a production server and you are wanted to know that into a particular peak hour which queries are taking most of the time. So what we'll do in this exercise is we'll try to see exactly the queries running in a particular hour which are taking most of the CPU so that we can identify them and then able to work on them to see if there is a fine tuning possible on them. In the third scenario we'll look into which are the high usage network queries available? Which queries usually block your network? So if you are seeing a lot of network IO as a weight type, then this is the type of a query which is gonna help you. In the last part, we'll look into which are the high usage disk IO queries. Any query which is doing a lot of logical reads, logical writes, or physical reads, we'll look into them. DMO, sys dm exact query stats. This is undoubtedly my favorite DMO in SQL Server. This DMO provides you detail of all the query run on SQL Server, how many times it was run, maximum time it has taken, on an average time it has taken, how much logical reads or writes a query has done, how many total number of rows a query has returned, this is the base DMO we will be using for our tuning exercise in this session. So let's look in the column. SQL handle, it's a binary pointer to the batch or stored procedure that contains current SQL statement. Uh, this is an improved method of DBCC input buffer which was used in SQL 2000. Last execution time, a query which is run has generated an, an execution plan. And this DMO track that what are the current plans or we can say the query SQL statement when it was last time executed. Execution count, total number of times the plan was executed since it was compiled. Total worker time, total CPU time in microsecond used for all executions of the plan. Max worker time, maximum CPU time in Micros can use for any execution of the plan. Total logical reads, total logical writes, and total physical reads. These are all about for each and every query how many logical reads, writes, and physical reads have been done. And if you noticed here, there is no total physical writes here. And the reason is that when a query writes data, it writes into the memory. So you do see the logical writes, but the writing to the disk is taken care by the checkpoint process. And it is possible that a query is writing a data, but, and you might be thinking that, so what if checkpoint is writing still, the physical write should be reported here. But the reason it cannot be reported is that a same logical write is done on a memory footprint and on the same block it is possible that multiple queries are writing into it 
So when checkpoint process goes and take data from the memory and dump it onto the disk, it basically doesn't know that a particular memory block has been updated by one query or more queries. And this is the reason from a query point of view, it's not able to figure that out. So after that, we see there is a total rows column. This column returns you the number of rows by every query. And this is a very important column because it will be able to tell you how the network bandwidth is used by these queries. You can just run this query and find out the total rows or more to see which queries are doing. But remember, this total rows column has been introduced with SQL Server 2008 R2 SP1. So it will not be available prior to that. And then statement start offset and statement end offset. So as you see the definition is started position of current SQL statement within a batch or stored procedure and ending position of current SQL statement within a batch or stored procedure. When DBCC input buffer was run, it always show you the, if you are running a stored procedure, it shows you just the stored procedure. It doesn't tell you what exactly it's going on under that stored procedure. While with 2005 onwards, what this statement start offset and end offset does is that it gives you a stored procedure name and then in that stored procedure if a particular statement is taking a time then it stores by every statement how much time it is taken. So if you find SQL handle that handle is for every batch into a stored procedure and that particular batch how much time it is taking is being stored in this particular DMO. And a statement start offset and end offset will able to get you to that particular stored procedure and will be able to locate us where that particular batch SQL statement is starting and ending. That's the second DMO we'll be using in this exercise and it's called sys.dmexec SQL text. So this DMO accepts SQL handle and plan handle. The SQL handle which we see in the previous slide, which is a binary pointer. What it does is it takes the SQL handle and return the ID of the database. If the database ID is null, which would be the case in a uh, case of prepaid SQL statement or a statement which is running across multiple databases. Object is the object of the ID. So if you're running a particular stored procedure, it will give you an object ID for that. Uh, but if you're running an ad hoc statement or a prepared SQL statement in that case it doesn't know the object ID because the statement could be talking to two or three tables at the same time so it doesn't report that. Now text is plainly the text of the SQL query this would be a complete text or if it's a stored procedure it would be a complete stored procedure uh, code and with the help of statement offset which I was talking in the previous slide you'll be able to figure out which from which start point to end point is the SQL statement getting executed and taking time. Now last interesting column is encrypted column. So if it is one then SQL test is encrypted zero if SQL test is not encrypted. Well that concludes first part of the video. Here is the link for downloading the queries which will be work looking into the demo tomorrow. Uh, and you can download it from my website and the link underneath below. Here is my uh, website, sqlfeatures.com. We can connect here, put your commands, sessions. You can subscribe me on YouTube channel on the SQL features to get all the new videos, alerts. Connect me on Twitter, Facebook. I look forward to talk to you. Thanks for watching. See you in tomorrow's session.